So, Trevor, how you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you, buddy? Good, good. Tell me, tell me about your upbringing, man. Where are you from? Man, Where did you originate from? I'm from Oklahoma. Uh, grew up in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, over by Tulsa. Uh, whenever I was three, we got taken away from my mother, and I didn't grow up with a father. He was in prison system all the way up till I was 15. So when I got taken away at three. Went to DHS custody, bounced around home to home, you know. Uh, finally, my three little sisters' grandmother took all six of us in because she didn't want us separated. She's not my, biologically my grandmother, but uh, she took us all six in And whenever I was six years old, and she adopted us. Whenever I turned 14, I guess we got too much for her to handle. She got older and stuff. So she sent me back to my mother, my biological mother, well, my mother was clean for five years, and uh, as soon as she got us back, she turned back towards drugs. So pretty much, I raised myself from the age 14 all the way up until 18. Uh, my dad got out of prison whenever I was 15. I met him for the first time. He decided he wasn't gonna change. So I turned 18 and I went to prison, Oklahoma State Prison, uh, sat in there for three and a half three and a half years. What were you in prison for, if you don't mind me asking? Man, uh, I started a lawn and landscaping company and I didn't pay my taxes on it. So it came back that I wrote checks to my employees and they bounced. So they got me for, you know, bogus check. But I was only 18 years old, you know, and whenever I got out of prison, uh, I started a family. I had a wife, I had kids. I went to the oil field, started working in the oil field. I mean, I was doing good, and then, uh, you know, I moved my wife to North Dakota from Oklahoma, you know, taking her away from her family. That, that was my worst mistake, you know, took her away from my family, or from her family, and she ended up getting tired of North Dakota. It was too cold. She couldn't step outside. My kids' hands were freeze as soon as taking them from the house to the, to the car. Uh, so she ended up getting a flight back while I was at work, and that left me moving everything we owned back with just a trailer and a truck. So we had to leave half of our stuff back in North Dakota. And when we, we got back, whenever I got back to Oklahoma, I said, okay, where do we go now? You know, cause we, we didn't have no home back in Oklahoma. She moved in with her family and, you know, we went downhill from there. We split up and, you know, uh, I think my kids are in a good position. She's a good mother, but you know, that left me to having to fend for myself and I had $200 in my pocket. So I decided, you know, the best bet was to go where the work is, which is Big Spring, Texas. And so since I have experience in the oil field, this is an oil field town. So I'm trying to find work, really. You know, I came down here with nothing and trying to find work. I've been here for almost a week, homeless. And so, I mean, yeah, there's people all around Big Springs that help. I mean, there, there's a lot of good people here. They stop and give you food and, you know, uh, they gave me this jacket, coveralls. Uh, the TA down the road here, they've been giving me free coffee in the morning time, you know. There's people that looks out here in Big Springs, you know, and I have a good feeling that God's got a plan for me here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna fulfill that plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, find work here and I'm gonna establish, you know, a new life pretty much. And I'm still gonna take care of my babies too. You know, my three babies are looking forward to daddy taking care of them. So, I mean, it's just that one step up on the rock that, that somebody needs, you know, when they fall all the way down, they can't get back up their self. They're gonna need help. So, I mean, with that being said, you know, uh, there's a lot of helpful people here in Big Springs. And I think that, you know, I'm halfway up on that first step. You know, once I get up on that first step, I can take off, you know. And I mean, if you look at me six months from now, I could be in a total, total different environment, total different position, you know. But this is life, man. It knocks you down and brings you back up, you know. And, you know, I got total faith in God that he's gonna work ways. Trials and tribulations. Yes, trials and tribulations, you know. What do you think the hardest part is, like, um, like how do you how do you wake up every day to face another day? Like what do you think the hardest part? Man, is? I, I wake up with a drive, man. I think inside my head, you know, uh, because it ain't fun sleeping outside, and especially whenever it's cold. So you know, I wake up with a drive, and I think back of my babies and stuff, and would they want to see dad in this position? You know, so whenever I get up in the morning, I go get my coffee, and 
you know, I take off and I, 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 I walk with faith, you know, I walk that God's going to direct my path and, you know, uh, I run into people, you know, that offers work and stuff and I give them my number and stuff, so I'm waiting on a phone call back. But yeah, whenever I wake up in the morning, that's, that's, I'm hoping, you know, to accomplish something, you not just waste the day away, you know. So, I mean, I walk from here all the way across town to the other truck stop, you know, I-20, and that's like three and a half miles, you know, that's there and back, because that's where I sleep at, so, you know. Uh, you walk back every day? I walk every day, yes. And, you know, that's why God gave you two feet, you know, you ain't stuck anywhere. As long as you try, he's going to try for you. And you see, this right here is a spot I found another homeless man. This is where they stay at, little areas like this. It's like shelters that they get out. Uh, like I said, there's that spot down the road. It's a culvert, you know. And uh, like I said, man, it, it, we're out here trying. We're not just out here trying to take advantage of somebody. You know, I met a lot of good homeless people that, you know, that I'm going to help up if I can, you know, whenever I help myself back up. So. This is where you guys sleep at? Yeah, sometimes, you know, whenever it's windy and stuff outside, that's somebody else's home outside. So you guys just leave your stuff here? Yeah. Usually. You get way down there, stay warm? Oh, yeah, you get way down there, you can't feel no wind or anything, you know. And it, uh, if you got an old cell phone or something, you can hang a light from the top. It's like magnet, you stick it up there. Yeah. But uh, you got a light down in there. And usually, you know, uh, some people would put like a grating up right there so the water goes in on the other side. Yeah, so. And then this side stays dry. You know, I've seen it like that before, but you know, uh, I met an old man and he showed me this area and you know, he uh, he comes and goes. I think that's his stuff right there. But How do you say people view you? Like when they see you on the side of the road or like, you know, with you the know, sun? Some How do you people, people are judgmental and some people, you know, they think the way, you know, uh, that Jesus Christ would think, you know, uh, some people would judge you and some people won't. I've had cars, you know, honk at me and, you know, pretty much try to run me off the road. And then I've had cars stop and ask me for rides and stuff like that. You know, I've had somebody stop over here and ask me if I'm okay because they see me come down inside this <laughs> hole, you know. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't worry about what others think, you know, because I know who I am and I know where I'm going in life. That's why I just let them think what they want. You know, they'll be judged for that later on in life. But uh, I've met some really good people though here in Big Springs. That's bad. Really good people. I appreciate it, man. Before you even think about going anywhere, like the video, subscribe down below. A little update. Um, Trevor's been applying at jobs. Still no luck, but uh, I keep in contact with him every day, at least every other day. So I record in December. I'll give you an update around March. I'll do a little follow-up, stuff like that. I'm going to try to drop content weekly. Yeah, like weekly, feel me? Other than that, see what's up.